In the 90s, Playmates Toys made the deepest line of Star Trek action figures in history. My name's Keith, and I'm a collector working towards owning all 284. I've been a Trek fan for almost 35 years, and most people are sick of me talking about it. But somehow I've convinced my old friend Mike to review them with me on... Look at my Star Trek toys! What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Look at My Star Trek Toys. I am excited about this week because this week we are going to do part one of One Hit Weirdos. And uh, what does that mean? Well, it's the various weird aliens and guest stars that showed up for only one episode in the Star Trek universe, but they made a figure of them anyway. How's it going, Mike? It's going great. Keith, some would say that we are one-hit weirdos, you know, without that one hit. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna say, like, where was our hit? I, I think I missed it sometime We're along the way. We're just in search of our hit. That's all. We're weirdos in search of a hit. Mm, mm. I think that's pretty much describes all of the internet. Okay, fair. But here we are. I'm excited about this. So uh, if you've seen the show before, I'm the big Star Trek nerd. And of course, Mike here doesn't really know Star Trek. So especially these super obscure ones are going to be fun to discuss with my co-host. But it's right in my wheelhouse, though, because I don't really need to know the lore. I mean, that's great insight, but I can judge them just for their weirdo-ness and action figureness. <laughs> Action figuriness. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you're, you're going to have to give us a, a rating on action figuriness on uh, each of Absolutely. these characters. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just jump right in because yeah. we have a lot to discuss. Let's hop in with our first one hit weirdo, figure number 65122. It's Trelane from Warp Factor Series 4. Let's beam him in. Beam in. Oh, yeah. Here we... Oh, yeah! <laughs> there is a lot going on with this figure, and there's, you know, frankly, a lot going on with this character because uh, Trelane is from the original series, our first original series figure in Season 1, Episode 17, The Squire of Gothos. And this was this uh, sort of weird, foppish, uh, omnipotent guy here that... Uh, Many people have speculated uh, forward that Trelane might be a Q. Uh, mm -hmm. He has an interest in the military and the dark sides of human history. He dresses around in a French suit. He plays a judge and he is all powerful. Uh, so certainly an interesting hypothesis. Maybe Trelane is a Q. And of course Trelane was played by William Campbell. And William Campbell uh, is rare for having two different figures as two different characters. He huh. also played Koloth in, uh, as an original series Klingon, which uh, in, the, of course, the legendary episode, The Trouble with Tribbles, we're going to get to that next episode, and he would reprise the role 27 years later, uh, however, in stock footage on Deep Space Nine. So, uh, yeah, tell us what you think of this guy here. I have thoughts. First thought is, what if you took the human version of uh, Cogsworth from Beauty and the Beast and mated him with Liberace. Yes. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And the character is kind of like that. It's also, a, I'm, it, I, I'm, I'm questioning the design choice. Maybe there's some uh, narrative influence here as to why uh, amongst all of the different characters in the Star Trek line, that Star Trek line that we've been looking at, does he have like such wide turnout here. Like his leg design is like he's riding a horse. Did he come with a mount of sorts? <laughs> he did not. It is interesting. The figure does stand like that because uh, I, I think it's to describe the wild, crazy energy of the character. Uh, it's, it can't be that they just like decided to use like another mold from a different line because they also designed the jacket, which is very relatively accurate to match the design of the legs, which I find very curious. It's a very yeah, elaborate it, design. It is a very, it really is, especially for a one-off. I mean, they can't use any of these parts for any other characters. Uh, in fact, if you, uh, if, let's hop over to Toy Cam. Toy Cam. And let's take a closer look here, because you'll notice that the jacket actually opens up 
if I get the toy <laughs> vaguely into the frame of the toy cam, uh, the jacket itself is malleable. You can you can open it and see his outfit on beneath it. So it's oh, a softer that's cool. plastic. Uh, so there's a just a tremendous amount of detail going into this figure from the original series. Yeah, that's a great one. I'm a big fan of the trolleying thus far. Oh, he's beaming in. <laughs> You know what? That that's not necessarily out of character with the uh, with the character because he's sort of cuish and impish and is always uh, you know running around causing chaos for our heroes in the original series. Huh. All right. Well, let us move forward with our ridiculous characters and let's hop forward to another original series. Figure, and that is 16039, the Talosian Keeper, which is from the yeah. Mixed Wave Series 5. Let's beam her in. That now, is not, not going to get old. <laughs> now, I, I, I say her, but really, uh, I should probably use they because this character was played by Meg Wiley, but voiced by a man, Malachi Throne. Interesting. Because uh, when they cast them, the Talosians, they were played by mostly female actors to make the head look larger. So they mm -hmm. wanted smaller people, but then they were voiced over by men. So before I tell you what's actually going on here, Mike, uh, what do you think's happening with this uh, Talosian? Um... <laughs> So many things are happening. I like that it's like an it's it's one of it, it's an alien being portrayed sort of like the alien as close as we've seen in the Trek universe in my in, in my limited experience to what we as Americans picture extraterrestrials to like be like the X Files classic yeah. alien without the super big buggy eyes, but like the big brain here. My guess would be that they're. They're more of a telepathic type being. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what the big brain would indicate. Very intelligent. Uh, perhaps they communicate uh, telepathically, I guess, as a telepath would. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm loving the long arms. I don't mean this to sound creepy, but I'm wondering, like, does the robe come off? Can we derobe de this character, or is it built, built up? <laughs> that sounds bizarre. I'm just curious what we got going on under that robe. Those long arms are intriguing. To What's me. going on under that robe? Uh, well, mercifully, and I'm sorry, Mike, <laughs> the <laughs> the robe does not come off and does not come open. But uh, I'll see if I can line it up correctly. But if you go to Toy Cam, you can see the oh! bottom of the robe. <laughs> if, you, if you look up, there's just a couple of legs sticking out of a... A basic plastic. It does look I, like you could maybe pop. It does look like it's segmented. The mold, like it was clipped, it clips together. Yeah, it does. I'd be the curious. Side? There are seams on the side. I'd be curious to know whether or not there are fully legs underneath it. That's I, true. I, if I, I had two of them, maybe I'd crack it open. Yeah, you don't have two though. Uh, I don't think so. I have to go back into the into the doubles chest and mm -hmm. see if I have one. You know, a better. Uh, it's not a podcast. Whatever, whatever. A better video show would have already <laughs> checked that and seen if I could pop it open. But uh, I'm not that person. So uh, this character is mostly interesting because this alien species was first introduced in the unaired pilot of Star Trek, oh. uh, entitled "The Cage," which was a pilot that they did for NBC and NBC rejected it which caused them to redo the entire show so the original show was very different there was no Captain Kirk, there was Captain Pike a different actor, the first officer was actually uh, named number one which they brought back in Next Generation but it was played by a woman, by Majel Barrett who ended up being uh, Gene Roddenberry's wife and the uh, network was like, that's inconceivable that a woman would be in uh, the first officer on a starship in 1968 or whatever, huh. which was, it's so disappointing and ridiculous to look back on now. Um, Spock was there, although he had emotions, weirdly. Um, so they, anyway, they didn't air this pilot. 
But later in season one, they actually reused all that footage as a two-part flashback episode called The Menagerie. So we ended up seeing that episode, uh, but but intertwined as flashbacks on a whole other storyline going on later in season one of uh, the original series. Cool. I so, mean, I dig, I dig the design. The, the head veins, as sort of like gross as they make me feel, are, are cool. And uh, yeah, I, I, it's weird. It's definitely it, a weirdo. Oh. It's not bad design for way back in the 60s and uh, with what little budget they had there. So, what's the, what's uh, yeah. what the necklace? What's the necklace all about? I don't remember. Oh, uh-huh, well, <laughs> you came for this a cutting insight, and here's what you got. Mike tried Folks, to disrobe it. if you it. remember what the, That's right. <laughs> uh, sadly, I didn't disrobe it, nor do I know what the necklace is about. But if you have done either, uh, write about it. <laughs> Let <laughs> us know. Comment below on the YouTube figure, uh, YouTube uh, comment board, and we will talk about it in a uh, next episode. But let us hop forward, not just uh, one of the figures. Let's hop forward two series. We're going to jump right over Next Generation, and we're going to hop to a Deep Space Nine series, and this is 6237 Tosk from the DS9 Series 2 line uh, why don't you join us, Tosk? Yeah! Look at that son of a bee. Yes! What a cool figure. All right, well, before I explain what's going on, Mike, what's going on? Well, this is a reptilian race who are very militant, uh, but this per- particular uh, species or uh, per- person, uh, Tosk, <laughs> happens to not want to be uh, militant. He's very docile, and he wants to be a stand-up comedian. You know, he wants to be... <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes one of us. He He's he's in a red jumper, uh, and he just wants to find uh, love, and and that's, that's, my, that's my pitch. <laughs> That was bad, wasn't it? No, I, I thought it was very creative. <laughs> uh, He's definitely reptilian. Well, I got that. Yeah, or rep, reptilish. Uh-huh. Reptilish. Okay, so Tosk is from the Deep Space Nine episode, uh, season one, episode five, Captive Pursuit. And he plays a species that is specifically genetically engineered and designed to be bred and hunted. Uh, by another species on Ooh, uh, his much, planet. Much darker. Much darker. Uh, and Tosk is played by Scott McDonald, who also played many other Star Trek uh, parts, including Commander Dolem on Enterprise. He was Goran Ajar, also on Deep Space Nine in the episode Hippocratic Oath. He was also sub-commander Navek in Face of the Enemy on The Next Generation, and he played Rollins in the Voyager pilot. This guy did a lot of Star Trek. Uh, certainly a very interesting character. It was a, it was a cool episode, um, which we will talk a little bit more when we get to our next figure. He's given me um he's given me vibes of he's given me vibes of uh what's the what's that character? Bebop and Rocksteady on the uh Oh and, and on the Turtles. Turtles. Yeah. No? Totally. Get any of that? Yeah, no, it, it absolutely is. Well, interesting because the turtles were done by Playmates, same uh, toy ah, company. Ah, okay. Although they they did not have a hand in the design of the character, right. but it ended up pretty uh, pretty cool like that. So we have now described the hunt Ed. Let us maybe look at the hunt Er. Mm. Let us go to six four three nine Hunter of Tosk. Which was. 
from Playmates Mixed Series Wave One. It's interesting that they put these two character or these two uh, figures in different series. But I think once they people saw that Tosk was awesome, well, we had to cover the Hunter of Tosk, right? Obviously, uh, uh, of course, of course. So uh, before I explain a little bit more, uh, why don't you tell me what you think's happening here? Oh, I'm thinking if you took M. Bison from Street Fighter Two and you mated him with the bad guy from the Saw franchise, I hmm. feel like we've got this design. Got a little jigsaw there. Yes, a little jigsaw. You would agree, I imagine. Yeah. Oh, he's back, oh. baby. <laughs> um, I haven't quite got a workflow down that works for me. <laughs> this um, is going... Great. Yeah, it's true. Our computers are dying, uh, but the action figures live on. They live uh, on. Well, you know what's great about 90s action figures? There's no computer chips, nothing lights up, there's no nothing. It just it's a piece of plastic. Look, but let me t- let's talk about the following. Yes. So, we've mentioned that the choking uh, accoutrement that uh, accompany many of the toys we've looked at thus far in some of the series you've collected mm-hmm. are less than inspiring. The color design is smoke pretty not there and the the amount of things you get the 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 uniqueness of the things you get haven't been cool but there's very little cooler in my opinion than a than an action figure that rocks a helmet i can only imagine that that helmet goes on his weird hair yeah it does go over the weird hair uh, it do, we ha- do we have it handy to check it out with with helmet uh we sure do okay let's go to toy cam Okay, so here he is, and here is his helmet. Now he has the helmet on, which oh, looks much yeah. sillier on yeah. than off. <laughs> it, it, that's like, true. It it is kind of dumb, but it it also looked it was it's so cool, and then it's a little dumb. Uh, that was also true on the episode itself. Huh? But but the uh, but, but the, still, the hel- it's better than a stupid thing. You just oh, oh, down. Just, the, it's not safe. It, it's not going to protect your head. It's, it's a little loose, you know. If uh, if you're going to play hockey or something, you want to get the little little tighter on the bucket. Uh huh. He's cool but, looking though. He looks a little less fearsome, I would say, uh, than he does in the episode. But yep. you know, the paint job is is he looks more like a lion kind of here. He does. He's sort of like the cowardly lion. Yeah, but uh, uh, so the intimidation factor not quite as didn't quite translate to the character, but that said, outfit's really rad. The helmet's cool. I think I would be actually. The more I look at it, the face is pr- is actually pretty bad. I think. Well, his eyes don't look as intimidating as you want them to. Yeah, I mean, and on the box, it's it's his name is Hunter of Tosk. Hunter of Tosk. That's right. Yeah, you'd think you'd want him to be a little bit more badass facially, but you know, I, I, I'm I'm pitting the I'm knitting the picks. Well, while we're knitting the picks, let's get into the details of this character. Uh, once again, this was in the from the same episode of Tosk. Obviously, it'd be weird if the hunter were there and Tosk weren't in Deep Space Nine, season one, episode five, Captive Pursuit, and this character was played by Garrett Graham. Who, if you're a hyper nerd uh, like me, you might know that Garrett Graham also played the suicidal Q Quinn on mm. Voyager. Okay. Uh, so he came back um, after his performance as the Hunter of Tosk as a very different character. Uh, really cool acting exercise that he did there. And I will also point out one more thing about this episode and these two figures. Michael Westmore who designed the makeup, won an Emmy for this episode, creating both of these cool new aliens for this episode and only got used once. Huh. It was, uh, it's, a, it's a bummer they didn't come back because it was an interesting setup um, and really cool design. I'm sure, sure you could have found a way to work those designs in again later, but, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's what happens sometimes. Mm. And you want to know what else happens sometimes? Sometimes we have a great actor on a show and we're like, hey, can you do what you do just as an old, old, old man? And that's what we did to Brent Spiner in our next figure, 6038. 
Ancient oh Doctor Soong from TNG Series 3. Why don't you be men, sir? Wow. There he is. Marty! Ancient... <laughs> Marty! We have to get back to the future. Yeah, it, it does have those vibes. Uh, yeah, why don't you tell us what you think before I get into it? Uh, I'm getting Marty vibes, as I've already mentioned. Um, but, Dr. Brown. Yes. Oh, yes, you're right. Uh, Dr. Emmett Brown, if you will. Uh, but I'm digging it. He's got a he's got an X Men like gambit kind of overcoat, which is much cooler than his frock from the episode. It appears <laughs> than his worn out yarn sweater. Yeah, that's true. Um, he's got that cool flexible cape again. He's wearing like old man house slippers, which I find fun, kind of crazy <laughs> and unique. Uh, but outside the cool jacket and it, completely out of context, he definitely. I would have thought it's just the guy from from Back to the Future. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, it's Brent Spiner in a whole mess of uh, ridiculous old man makeup. Uh, Brent Spiner, of course, is the actor who plays Data. And this is from the episode of Next Generation Brothers, uh, season four, episode three. And uh, Brent Spiner is playing, this is the creator of Data who oh, modeled that's Data cool. on himself. So it's sort of his Data's father in it, so to speak. And Brent Spiner, in this episode, actually played three different characters in one episode, which was pretty cool because he plays Data, Dr. Soong, his creator, and his evil twin, Lore. So uh, really cool... Uh, showcase episode for Brent Spiner. Now, you uh, super fans like I, you're going to be saying, hey, wait a minute. This is one hit weirdos and we we see Dr. Soong again in uh, season six. And I would say to that, yes, we do, but we see young Dr. Soong. This is ancient Dr. Soong. Oh. And uh, so it, in the, there's, a, there's an episode where Data uh, learns how to dream and he talks with his creator, played by a contemporary-aged Brent Spiner, um, in a dream. Anyway, it's it's way cooler than I just described it. Uh, but here he is. And uh, actually, I have a fun little thing. If we head back to Toy Cam, I actually have this figure in the box. So let's take a look at the box and what yeah. came in it. So uh, in this series, this was the Season 7... Uh, series of next gen, they started doing pogs, pog cards. You remember pogs? Uh, yeah, love me some pogs. Stupid game, but was into it. Oh, so ridiculous! But they made a whole bunch of the Star Trek pogs to go with the figures. And uh, the other thing I like when I went back into here, I don't know if you can if you can see it here, but there's that little weird doll of a person there. There's a purple. It's a it's technically <laughs> called a simulacrum that he was using to design his androids and such. That's super cool. Yeah, and it's like super creepy tucked in there. You can't see it. You're just going to open it up like, "Oh god, there's this creepy voodoo doll." But anyway, yeah, it's like a, a little it's of, like a it's like a toy easter egg kind of thing. It is. And a uh, bunch of old uh, you know, beakers and science ex equipment as he's an inventor sort of a mad scientist deal. And you can see um, on these uh, later next-gen cards, um, the graphics get a little sharper. On the back, we can see uh, they had a much larger series come oh, yeah. out there. And uh, the space cap, they're calling them. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's really, it's, it's really interesting. Again, you know, Playmates, the line is just so deep. It's really remarkable um, just how many figures they made and how obscure they got. Um, but, you know, Brent Spiner, you got another uh, cool figure. So, Does he get paid for a second character? Or, or no, it's just part of his thing. That is a good question. I doubt it. I don't think you get paid on the character. I think you get paid by the episode. And as he was a series regular... 
I don't think it would bump up his uh, his billing or his pay. Sadly, and I don't, you know, I don't know. Someday we should have one of the cast members on the show and ask them, did they get royalties on the figures? My guess would be no. I don't think Paramount handed out a lot of royalties on <laughs> what happened uh, with the IP down the road. I, 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 my family worked on uh, the show. They did all the sound effects and uh, all the sound effects that play on some of the Playmates toys that are their, their sound effects, but they're not getting paid for them. So for forever and ever, they're hearing the, uh, the transporter or the door's wish or whatever, and they're not getting a royalty on that. Just in case you're wondering, it goes into the Paramount database and is gone. But what's not gone is this episode, not quite yet, because we have one more figure in our one hit Weirdos, we are going to take a look at 6061. What? Vorgon from TNG Series 2 and the episode Captain's Holiday, Season 3, Episode 19. Why don't you beam in there, buddy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here is your Vorgon. Absolutely. Why don't you tell us? Uh, what's going on? Who are these people? What do they do? You only get one of them in the box? You only get one of them. There's only one. Oh, interesting. Well, it turns out that you only get one because they share a mind. They are Ooh. ostensibly identical twins, uh, but they can bifurcate into multiple physical beings, but they share oh. one brain and... Uh, yeah, that this definitely looks like just a crate. Like they had, they only had fifteen minutes to come up with the creative, <laughs> the monster design, and they just like whip something together real quick. I love the cod piece on the action figure. I'm, do they have that in the episode? Yeah, they do. Yeah, they that, sure like, do. Yeah, it's just weird, but kind of wacky and awesome and a little gross. It's all kinds of. Co it's like lizardy. Oh, the back is cool. They got some like gill type of things happening. They're at Mardi Gras. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I mean, the, the the facial prosthetics are incredibly elaborate, and but the costume on the episode, the, the figure makes it look cooler than it is. On the episode, it looks like they just took some carpet scraps and just layered yes. them on top of itself. Yes, that's accurate. <laughs> Which might actually have been what happened. Well, so these the the Vorgons, uh, the alien species themselves, and Captain's Holiday, they claim to be from the future. And uh, so they are. There's a whole caper with uh, Picard and Vosh uh, trying to find this thing. We don't actually know if they're from the future or not. It's a little dubious what their mm. deal is. Uh, but if you watch that episode and you enjoy a, uh, a Patrick Stewart in short shorts, this is your opportunity. Where's that action figure? <laughs> I don't. I don't. They didn't make a short shorts Picard, <laughs> but maybe <laughs> they should have before they made a Vorgon. <laughs> but uh, so my my favorite thing about this, oh, and, and to be uh, to be fair, the two actors who played the Vorgons were Michael Champion and Karen Landry. Uh, but my favorite thing about this figure is the Vorgon comes with a Horgon. <laughs> now, my question to you, Mike, is what what do you imagine a Horgon is? Oh man, I have like three jokes teed, but. <laughs> I'm editing, I'm editing. A Horgon is got to be something like their... It's got to be their choking hazard accoutrement, right? It, yes, it is in the choking hazards, yes. Uh, it's some sort of a weapon? Uh, it is not. Um, but I, what I... Every time I hear it, I think it's like a... It's a it's like a spray that you spray after the amorous night you paid for it, when uh -huh. it's the morning and it's time to move on with your day. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what it actually is, the the episode takes place on Ryza, which is a pleasure planet, um, oh. with uh, filled with people who are, let's say, uh, willing to be amorous uh, quickly, and uh, for fun. And the way you signal to the people of the planet that you would like to let's be amorous. And uh, what's called Jamaharan on the uh, show, as silly as that sounds, it's a little figure that says, "Yeah, I want to do it." So, 
<laughs> I, I, you notice Orgon. I switched to your one shot here because I just want you on the internet saying that. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I want to do it. He goes with one of those. That's a pretty <laughs> funny practical joke that Riker pulls on Picard, uh, who doesn't know what it is, and people keep propositioning him, and he's confused in his short shorts. Oh, so, man. Uh, well, folks, that is one hit weirdos part one. I'm so if glad there's would, a part two. Of course, there's going to be a part two. Uh, there's so many one hit weirdos on Star Trek. That's half of why we're here. Well, if you enjoyed this, do us a huge favor. You know, do the like, do the subscribe. We'll be putting more of these up. Uh, we're going to get to one hit weirdos part two when I assemble enough of the uh, more figures that are one hit weirdos. But next week, we're going to do something super fun. We're going to do crossovers. Part one, we are going to do an episode about epi uh, characters from one series crossing over onto Ooh. other series, and they made a figure of it. So will we see Spock on Next Generation? Will we see Deep Space Nine back on the original series? Stay tuned. We will see you next week. Thanks for watching. Look at my Star Trek toy!